Text analysis is one of my favorite things to automate in Excel because it can save you so much time. Instead of spending hours and hours trying to extract keywords out of a table or manually categorizing rows, what if a formula could do it for you? Today, I'll walk you step-by-step step through the one formula you need to check if a cell contains specific text from a list. There are multiple methods out there, but I've found the most simple and dynamic approach. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. No matter what kind of spreadsheet you have, I'm sure it could use a little updating. That's why I created the Spreadsheet Tune-Up, a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps you need to optimize any spreadsheet. Let me show you the setup I have here. I have a table that has the detection method, and it's just like a list of different um, chemical detection methods. And then here's a list of detection principles, spectrometry, spectroscopy, and sensor. These three words are what I want to look up. This is the specific text I want to try and find in this giant list. So you can see here I have the second uh, row says spectroscopy. So what I want is for the detection principle spectroscopy to show up right here in this cell. Here's spectrometry, I want this to say spectrometry. This one says sensor, this one, I want this to say sensor. Some of them have nothing. So if, if none of these uh, principles or none of the text in this list um, is present in this in this row, I want it to show nothing. We're going to be using three functions to accomplish this, and I'm just gonna build it out here and then put it into this cell in the table. The first one is search, and this finds text within another text, which is exactly what we need. The find text is going to be this detection principles list, and what you see when I select it, it uses structured references, which is when the data is uh, referenced by name instead of by address. And that is um, because this is set up as an Excel table. Within text is where do we want to search? So that will be this specific cell in this table. And then we'll close that out. And since there's nothing in there's no results here, it's showing three values because none of them match. So actually I'm just gonna move this down so that we can uh, see a res what, what it looks like when there is a result. So this one says there's spectroscopy. So you can see that's the second item in this list and it's returning a spilled uh, array. It's a dynamic array um, in Excel, which means it's searching each of it's searching this one cell with each of these three um, values. The first one is returning nothing because there is no spectrometry found in this cell. The second one is returning a 17 because that means that at the 17th position in this cell, it found the word spectroscopy. The third value is nothing because the word sensor is not in this cell. Okay, now I always like to build functions from inside to outside. So we're gonna wrap this search function with the is number function. And there's no other arguments. It's just, we're just wrapping it completely. So now go to the end of that, a close parentheses and hit enter. And you can see that this function, all it does is detect whether what was fed into it was a number or not. So the first one was just a value and now so it's saying false because it is not a number. Only the second element in this array returned a true because it had a number, remember it was 17, because the word spectroscopy is found in this cell. So now we have an array of true or false. This is called a Boolean. So we have an array of Booleans and now we're gonna wrap that in one more function, and that is the filter function. Um, so the filter function has three arguments. The first one is array, which means what do we want to return? And that will be, we wanna return this detection principle list. So I'm just putting it, I'm shoving it in the front of the rest of our formula. Um, that's what we want to return. Then you put a comma. Include is like a logical test that says, 
which of these rows do you want to include? Do you want to include everything in categories principle, detection principle? No, we only want to return the rows where the value is true. And that kind of happens automatically in the background. So if you have an array of Booleans, true or false, and you use that for the include argument in the filter function, it will only return the elements in the array where the elements in the include uh, array of Booleans are equal to true. Um, now the last argument is what to do if it's empty. And I'm just, I just always use uh, two quotes, quote, quote, which just is an empty space and then close that filter function. Now you can see that we have only returned the element where that Boolean was true, which is the element where uh, the search function found something. So if we put this here, uh, it works perfectly. And since this is an Excel table, all I did was copy it and paste it into this column once, and it automatically dragged it down to the entire table. So now this is done. We have returned the keyword from this table if it's found in this column. The next thing I wanna show is what to do if you possibly have more than one result. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like by just adding the word sensor here. You can see that it, it didn't work. It's causing this spill error because, and I'll put, pull this back out, um, because there are two results. This formula is not enough to, uh, to help us when there are two results because it's going to create this spill error. Because if you think back, let's just remove this filter and go back to just the is number function. There are two elements that are returning true. So it's grabbing both of these values, both of those rows. But never fear, there is a way to combine these into one cell, and that is with the text join function. So we're gonna surround, we're gonna wrap the filter function in another function called text join. To clean this up, I'm going to open up this um, formula box and use alt enter to put that to a new line because the first argument in text join is the delimiter. I'm going to use a comma. So I'm going to open up quotes, comma, space, close quotes. And that is just how you want to separate the items in this list. Do we want to ignore empty cells or include empty cells? I always ignore them. And then the last argument is the result of this filter. So it'll take these two rows and combine them into one. And then I'll close those parentheses. And you can see it just made a list. So now I'll copy this and paste it back here. And instead of having a spill error, we just have a nice list. And because it's an Excel table, you can see that as I'm moving down, the formula is not changing. That formula has been copied down to every row of this table. Um, so that, if, and it's totally dynamic. So even if we had all of the words, like we had spectrometry sensor and spectroscopy, it just includes them all in one cell. And let's say you get to this point and you realize that, you know, some of these empty rows you wanted to, to actually categorize. So I'm going to, because I want to get detection and detector, I'm just going to add a keyword called detect. And you can see that it automatically added those to this lookup. This is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. That's all there is to it. Note, these functions are available for Excel 2019 and later. Let me know in the comments what kind of use case you can think of for partial matching with a list. Are you loving these array functions or what?